Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the stocks that were in play today. Okay, so first up, let's take a look here. Let's see here. Okay, let's take a look here at HMNY. Okay, so so it, this is the 15-minute chart, and, and um, a, as you can see here, it broke out today above all the moving averages. That's why I wanted to show you this chart first. Um, it, it, as you can see, on Friday, um, it had closed with the with the tight Bollinger Bands. Okay, and it was below the the, the 50, 100, and middle Bollinger Band on the 15-minute chart. There was a gap up open at the open today, and, and, it, and then it broke at 10 o'clock above the 200 simple moving average. These were all signals that the stock was in play. Notice that it was on a big volume spike. And then the share price ended up breaking the 300 simple moving average. It pulled back. And then at end of day, when it finally turned into support and, and at, at 245, that was the signal. It was showtime. Notice there was a big uh, volume spike along with it. And it pushed really strong into the close on heavy volume. So, yeah, that was a very big move for HMNY. It's now trading above all the moving averages on the 15-minute chart. If it does pull back, you want to see the candle stay above that 300 simple moving average at 1140. 46. That is the big level. Once a stock gets above that level on the 15-minute chart, as long as it stays above, that signal of the chart is still healthy. Okay, so let's look at the, the daily chart. Okay, so what's going on on the HMNY uh, daily chart it, is it came down and it held support. Um, no, notice the, the green line here is the 50-day simple moving average. So it held the support zone. We, we had been looking for a close above the pink line, which is EMA4 at 1160. That finally happened today. There was finally a close above the the two key resistance levels that, that we've been talking about, um, the, the, the EMA4 and the 50-day simple moving average, close above, above both of those and EMA8 and EMA13 at 1225. Notice how there's no upper wick on today's candle. High of day was the last day of the, uh, was the last trade of the day. So, so the bulls were in control into the close and this was pushing an after hours trading. Um, so, so now the big target is the middle Bollinger Band here at 1560. That's the level we want to see break tomorrow. We want to see a close above that level. If that happens, then that could signal the possible start of a new uptrend. And then the upper Bollinger Band up here, and then the, the high close on the 11th will be the targets. Okay, so if it fails to break above the middle Bollinger Band and close above that level, that'll signal more consolidation. So it really needs to be above that level to get the new uptrend going. If it drops back below the 50-day simple moving average, that would be a signal that the bears are back in control, and it would be a risk to hold if you are a bull. Notice there's a PSAR bull flip. So the green dots flip below the candles for the first time since the pullback started. So that's a very good signal. Also, uh, uh, if you look here, there's a big giant volume spike. So that's always uh, you know reassuring when a stock is breaking out or, or making a reversal. If it's on strong volume, that makes it you know a stronger move. And so if you look down here at MACD, you'll see on the 8, 13, and 5, there, there was a bullish crossover today. Okay, so now, now we've got the, the MACD line hooking up on on the 1226 and 9 and bulls want to see that cross over the blue signal line that would signal the possible start of a new uptrend if you look here at the HMNY weekly chart now in this chart each candle represents one week of trading what you'll see here is it had three weeks of pulling back. It held EMA 13 support. That's the orange line at 1034. Notice the uptrend is still intact. It's trading above all the moving averages here. Notice you've got the middle Bollinger Band. The, 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 uh, that's the 20-week moving average, the 100, the 50, the 200, and the 300-week moving averages. It's trading above all of those levels. So that's very strong. Uh, what it needs to do now is get back above uh, the, 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 the high close which is going to be the closing price here uh, for the uh what is that the, the second week of October and so so up here around uh, just above 20 around 2021 20, that's going to be the the target to the upside and the key level to break on the weekly chart now if you look at the HMNY monthly chart um, this is going to show us where that that big resistance level was that we uh, nailed on the big uh, run last month so so if you guys were uh, um, you know had been following the videos and following uh, following on stock twits you know that, that we were looking 
for the 30 uh, resistance zone to, to, to be the top of the last run. And the reason why we thought that was because back here in 2005, that that was a major resistance level. So it hit that, it pulled back, it formed a long upper wick. But then now look at this month, there's a white candle forming. It, th this is just the start of the month. Uh, this, this month's candle will not set until the, the uh, end of the month, the last trading day of the month. But but this just shows you that that the upside potential. Okay, so so it's it's uh, you know working its way back up to 30. That would be the next key resistance level. Notice there's no candles in between here and, and that zone. So so you've got uh, you know not a lot of resistance. You have to go all the way back to 2005. So so yeah. So uh, keep an eye on H M and Y. We'll see if it can keep this going. Now if it closes below E M A four at 1067. That would be the red flag that the chart is cooling down. If you look back here, the last time that happened was uh, back here in uh, 2016. You know, there was a big break above EMA4. Once it finally closed below, that single downside risk and had a multi-month pullback. So as long as that pink line is holding, the chart is super strong. Okay, let's take a look at NOG. This stock just will not quit. It just keeps pushing higher. Congrats, everyone. This has been one heck of a run. Stocks don't just always keep going up like this, but this this has been, uh, you know, cruising along. It's very frothy on RSI. Okay, so these annotations have not been updated, and, and so notice that that they had been overbought levels for a little while here. It's hitting 82 on on RSI and 97 on Fasto. So there's not a lot of juice in the tank. Also, you can see uh, Plus DI is pushing really hard here at 45. So so this is a, an exceptional run. Um, if you look down here at the at the volume bars first, notice that there's eight green volume bars in a row you know so there's not many eight day runs that so it's so it's uh long in the tooth if you will it's, it's very very frothy but they keep pushing it higher on big volume so today it hit the key resistance level back here in july um this is july the uh what is that 27th closing price it hit right up there around 135 and it pulled back and, and so it's going to need to close above that level to head higher if it can then the next big target's going to be up here at the 200 day simple moving average at 170 that is the next big moving average resistance level. If this 135 turns into resistance, you could see the candles work back into the bands. And then the big level to hold is going to be this 100-day simple moving average at 102. Notice that EMA 8 is at 108. So the candles will likely drop all the way back down here and test that dollar level if it fails to break 135. When a stock makes a really big run like this and it's got a nice uptrend, you know, the chart isn't broken when it pulls back. It's just giving you a chance to reload as long as support holds. So yeah, so we would be looking for one for a potential reload off of the 100-day simple moving average if it failed to break 135, break up 135, and then the signal would be to try to ride up here to the 200-day uh, simple moving average at 176. If you look here at the 15-minute chart for NOG, you'll notice here it, it, it was working on breaking high close resistance. That was the closing price here at 1145. It came down here. It held the middle Bollinger Band nicely today. It came back up. You know, it formed this the ascending triangle pattern, and then it, and then at, here at 3:30 it closed above. That does signal more upside potential, and so you want to see the share price stay above 134. If it drops below 134, that could be a red flag that it might consolidate, and then the big level is the middle Bollinger Band at 129. If that breaks, you could see a big drop down here to the 50 simple moving average at 113. Okay, so take a look at ENRJ. Okay, so this is the 15 minute chart. I wanted to show you this first because it's breaking out above all the moving averages here. Um, notice it had the classic tight Bollinger Bands, all right, and then it, then it's, uh, you know, broke out here above, uh, you know, all the moving averages except for it had the 300 simple moving average, the blue line to break, and then that finally happened here at 215. And, and so once again, notice how, how when, when the, the 300 broke and the candles got above, the share price really got moving. So keep that in mind. Many times when a stock is in a consolidation pattern, the 300 simple moving averages on top and the 15 minutes chart and once it breaks above that's the big catalyst for the stock to push higher now now all it has to do is stay above this blue line if it stays above it that'll signal more upside if it drops below that will signal downside risk now notice how how you've got the the the, the middle Bollinger Band crossing over the 300 simple moving average that's exactly what you want to see so so as long as this middle Bollinger Band is holding then the uptrend's intact basically at 30 cents if it drops below that would signal uh, more consolidation notice big big volume was pouring into it as it was pushing higher. So, so this is interesting. If you look at the, this is the last ENRJ chart. So, so first, I mean, you know, it's got juice in the 
tank. Look at Fasto. I mean, it's way down here at 14, so it's still at oversold levels on Fasto. And then you've got RSI at 61. So there's a lot of room to run here. Okay, so it's got major juice in the tank. If you look at the close today, this is not this is the last time we made this chart, and we made the chart on this big black candle on this day right here. Um, what is that? The, uh, the 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 21st of October, and, and so when this chart was posted, um, th this was the uh, the the uh, current share price, and it was hitting up here the the high close from back here in April, and, and it did pull back, and it ended up forming a nasty candle that day. This long black candle that was the signal. When anytime you have a gap up open and a big black candle forms the long upper wick, that's a signal. To go to the sidelines it is a risk to hold and once again that that theory was proven correct because the share price dropped for multiple days all the way down till it finally found support and and so uh, what happened you know it found support came down consolidated it got above today the, the middle bollinger band the, the 50 and the 100 day simple moving averages so that was really good it needs to stay above 30 and then notice where it closed it closed right at the 200 and 300 day simple moving averages at 34 and 35 if it can close above both of those levels, that's going to be the big signal that it wants to head higher. Um, um, that, that's going to that, that's what we're looking for tomorrow. We want to see it close above 35, and and then you're going to have um, a couple of uh, key levels right here. The the closing price because this is the close, the bottom of this black candle uh, at, at about 39. That's going to be the next big level to break. If it can close above 39, th then you could see it run up here. You've got the uh, high close here at 55, and then the really big levels up here. Uh, between 64 and 65, the high close from back there in April. So there's a lot of upside potential if this can close above 35. Notice that there's big volume behind the move. Okay, so so there was giant volume on, on, on this 21st of October, and the share price consolidated, and now there's uh, big volume today. You know, the, 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 this is a, a potential uh, loading pattern. We'll just have to see if it can break resistance. Okay, let's take a look at MOSY. Okay, so it had a nice move today. Uh, the, the semiconductors are, have been heating up, um, so so uh, MOSY is back in play. It closed up 19%. Um, notice RSI closed above 50 for the first time since way back here in the uh, last time it was bullish back here in August. So that was a nice move. We want to see that stay above 50. Want to see Fasto get above 50 as well. Um, there was a bullish crossover in ADX. The green line crossed the black and the red lines to the upside. And so the bullish development today for the stock was the close above the middle. Bollinger Band. That's the data purple line at basically 75 cents. Okay, so that that level needs to hold. If it drops below 75, it will no longer be in play. Look at this long nasty downtrend. Do not hold a penny stock that is forming candles under the you know below the middle Bollinger Band on the daily chart unless you are short or playing the bounce. Okay, so so if you look here, there there have been a couple closes above the middle Bollinger Band and it failed to hold. And then you can go back here, and, and, and so it keeps trying to close above that level and it fails and it pulls back maybe this will be the charm okay so what's going to determine whether or not this is that this is the time it's really going to head higher well it's all about this green line right here and that's the 50 day simple moving average basically at 87 cents it tested that level today it broke it intraday and it pulled back if it closes above that level that should be the signal it wants to head higher and then we'll be shooting for dollar land and the 100 day simple moving average at 117 notice when it ran in august it did run all the way up to the 100 day simple moving an average you know the upper wick on today's candle almost hit that level so there's a uh, you know so so it is likely to, to to have a nice run all the way back up here to the 100 day simple moving average if it, if it can break this green line and notice the uh, bullish volume spike today so that that is a good sign except for there, there was a, a really long upper wick on today's candle so that that could be dilution they could have sold some shares into the run um, if it's all gonna be about the middle Bollinger Band if the middle Bollinger Band holds then it's in play if it breaks then it's no longer in play now now notice these green dots here when the share price you know got down to the PSAR level um, the 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 uh, dots uh, flipped above the candles up here and, and, and so what happened was the, uh, the, the the dots have been above the candles this entire time for for the whole month of basically of September 
in October, all the way heading into November, there has not been a bullish PSAR flip. And then today, the, 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 the candles broke above the PSAR level, and SAR stands for stop or re reverse, and the dots have flipped below the candles. So that's signaling a possible uh, bullish change in trend. And, and so uh, accompanied with the volume spike, that, that's signaling the chart is really heating up and the close above the middle Bollinger Band. There was also a bullish crossover on the 12, 26, and 9 MACD today. So that was another very key development. And there was an 8, 13, and 5 crossover last week. If you look back here in the, the uh, August run, it was the bullish crossover on MACD that signaled the start of the run. See, it, it crossed over here, and then it had a big run that followed. So we'll see if it'll follow suit and uh, keep pushing higher. Okay, let's look at CIE. Okay, so this is up 32% today. Uh, keep an eye on this stock. Um, it, it's it's breaking above the oversold level. So so really, the, the only thing that matters on this chart is, is, is EMA4 right now. That's the pink line. You know, this had a big drop. It's a dead cat bounce play. It had big volume down here. EMA4 is at 71. If it can break a Above 71, there could be a trade for, with the run up to EMA 8 at 80. So the trade would be between 71 and 80. That'd be like a 10% gain. It could possibly run up to uh, the the EMA 13 to 89, and that would be a nice, you know, uh, th that would be a nice percentage gain from 70 if it could get above that level. Notice how it hasn't closed above EMA 13 in a, in a very very long time. You have to go off this chart, so that's going to be a tough level to break. Um, if for some reason it does break above EMA 13, you've got the middle Bollinger Band here at 98 cents basically dollar land if they can close above these levels that would be the signal that that this broken chart the where the bears have been the only ones winning it, it is finally uh you know it's starting to head higher and then you could get a possible uptrend this is a risk to hold if it, if it's closing below ema4 it has to close above ema4 to be in play so keep an eye on it we're going to see if it can do that tomorrow and then finally let's look at gnca this closed up 20 percent today it had a nice move it's a above uh, the oversold levels now in R sign fast dome. And so, yeah, this is uh, similar to the last chart where it's a dead cap bounce play. But but notice how it closed above EMAs 4 and 8 today. So it closed above the pink and the green line. That was the first close above EMA 8 since this drop back here. There, there's a big gap on the chart in September. between This is the top of the gap, the bottom of this candle. And the top of this candle is, is the uh, from the um, 26th is the bottom of the gap. And so what we're looking for now that there was a close above this lime colored line. Line, EMA 8 for the first time since the big pullback that, that if it can break the orange line here EMA 13 at 128 uh, uh, then it, it, you know then it's got to get above the middle Bollinger Band at 138 if it can get above those two levels th then our targets going to be up here at the bottom of the gap at two dollars so so there could be a nice move here if it could get above that middle Bollinger Band a close above the middle Bollinger Band would be really bullish and, and you know you could see a run up to the upper Bollinger Band and to test this bottom of the gap level so keep an eye on GNCA. Okay, thank you very much for viewing this video. If you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis, check us out at mychartcoach.com and our YouTube channel at mychartcoach.com. Thank you.